The Armour Research Reactor, located at the Illinois Institute of Technology in Chicago, is the world's first private nuclear reactor designed specifically for industrial research. Construction costs for the reactor were borne jointly by the Armour Research Foundation, which serves as owner and operator, and by 24 private industrial organizations. This nuclear reactor was designed and built by Atomics International. It opens an entirely new field of research for industry by providing a continuous on-the-spot source of neutrons, high-energy gamma rays, and radioisotopes. It is a homogeneous solution type. The fuel is in the form of uranyl sulfate, dissolved in distilled water, and contained in a stainless steel spherical core. Cooling for the core is provided by 10 sections of stainless steel cooling coils located within the core. The sections are connected in parallel and have a total length of 90 feet. Distilled water serves as coolant and is continuously circulated through these coils. During core assembly, a series of tack welds was made to hold the two core sections rigidly in place. A shielded arc welder was then used to fuse the seam together without the use of filler rod. A stainless steel backup was drawn up into the weld, ensuring 100% penetration. Two additional weld passes made with filler rod completed the seam welding process. The core and fuel solution overflow assembly was inverted to facilitate installation of the graphite reflector. The graphite sections were hand cut to ensure a close fit. After each block was individually marked and cut to size, assembly of the reflector was fast and precise. The tight fit around the core ensures a maximum of reflecting material in the most important region for high reactor efficiency. A tube which extends through the center of the core permits specimen exposure in the region of maximum flux density. Special safety features are included to ensure completely safe operation in densely populated areas. One example is this aluminum outer envelope, which encloses the core and its associated piping. If maintenance should be required, the entire core unit can be removed and reinstalled. The neutron reflector consists of a stack of four inch square graphite blocks, which have a high density and a very low percentage of boron. The blocks were stacked in layers and surround the core assembly to form a reflector five feet high, five feet wide, and six and a half feet long. The exposure ports were plugged with wooden packing dowels prior to shipment to the reactor site. This assured proper alignment of the moderator blocks during transit. Biological shielding is provided by a five-foot thick wall of high-density iron ore concrete. A single bucket contains one cubic yard of dense concrete, which weighs over 6,000 pounds. The dense concrete surrounds the reflector assembly and sub-pile room. Total weight of the reflector assembly is 10 tons. The instrumentation system, which terminates in the control console, consists principally of circuits to monitor and control reactor power and to display information on the performance of the gas handling and cooling systems.
Four vertical control rods are provided for power level regulation and shutdown of the reactor. The rods are made of boron carbide encased in stainless steel. They travel in sleeves extending through the spherical core. As the rods are lowered into the core, the boron absorbs neutrons and the chain reaction cannot be maintained. Thus, the reactor is stopped. By removing the rods, fission is increased and sustained at the desired level. Reactor power level can be controlled either by automatic or manual operation of the control rods. To stop or scram the reactor, Power to electromagnetic rod couplings is cut and the rods fall by gravity to the core. The rods are also dropped automatically by the action of any of the reactor scram circuits or by power failure. Reactor fuel is urinal sulfate dissolved in light water. The uranium is 88% enriched in the 235 isotope. The solution water forms the moderator for slowing down the fission neutrons. An inherent safety feature acts to shut down the reactor in the event of an abnormal power rise, even if its mechanical devices should not function. This feature results from the negative temperature coefficient and negative gas coefficient. Fuel solution temperature increase is indicated by a shift from yellow to red. The negative temperature coefficient results from the expansion of the fuel solution as its temperature rises. When the solution expands, the reactor becomes less reactive due to its change in geometry and reactor power is decreased. The negative gas coefficient results from the radiolytic decomposition of the water, producing hydrogen and oxygen. These gases expand the solution to a subcritical state, which also shuts the reactor down. If a power surge should ever be great enough, it would force a portion of the solution into the overflow chamber above the core. It would leave the reactor in a subcritical state, and the appropriate corrective action could be taken. The solution would then drain slowly back to the core and the reactor could be started once again. The shutdown mechanism just demonstrated will operate only in the event that all mechanical control and safety systems should not function. The horizontal thermal column is five feet square and is shielded by a motor-driven dense concrete door. The door weighs 40,000 pounds and has limit switches to stop the in or out travel. Large specimens as well as special test equipment can be placed in this exposure facility. In this experiment, the reactor is being used to study the effects of slow neutron bombardment on a laboratory test moderator. A fast neutron beam is also available when graphite stringers are removed from the center of the thermal face. With the test equipment in place, the reactor is ready for startup. Since radioactive materials are present in the reactor and are handled in the experiments, a positive means for controlling the atmosphere in the reactor room is provided. The concrete room walls are coated with a plastic paint to prevent the passage of gases. Specially designed gas-tight doors seal the reactor room. From the control console, the operator monitors and controls the complete operation of the reactor. 
A check is made of the various instruments which display control rod position, cooling system temperatures, gas handling system pressures, and other information required for efficient and safe reactor operation. As control rods are withdrawn from the core, the fission chain reaction begins. Technicians in the control room and on the reactor floor talk with each other over an intercommunication system. In this way, information presented on monitoring equipment set up adjacent to the reactor may be instantly and continuously compared with control console data. The heavy concrete biological shielding which surrounds the reactor permits personnel to remain in the reactor room during operation. There are 18 tube type exposure facilities in the reactor consisting of metal tubes which extend through the concrete shield to the immediate vicinity of the core. Each tube facility is equipped with a graphite reflector plug and a dense concrete and steel shielding plug. Access is gained to the region of maximum flux density through a central tube facility which extends through the center of the core. Nuclear reactors have a variety of practical applications. A complete listing of the many uses of radioactivity and radiation would run into the thousands. Among the current applications is the development of new chemical processes and products. Here, a radioactive carbon isotope is being transformed from radioactive carbon dioxide gas to a radioactive organic liquid. This is a useful tool for research on plastics, synthetic fabrics, and pharmaceutical products. A laboratory technique known as activation analysis is coming into widespread usage. Impurities too small to be detected by chemical or spectroscopic analysis can be detected by irradiating a small sample of material and then measuring the activity thus produced. By studying the gamma energies emitted, impurities present are identified and analyzed. The effects of radiation on transistors and semiconductors is being studied. A transistor which has been irradiated in a reactor undergoes a series of stability tests. Research of this type plays an important part in the development of new materials and techniques for electronic applications. In the field of botany and agriculture, extensive research is being conducted with the aid of radioisotopes. Here, an analysis is made on the absorption of radioactive phosphorus into the structural components of tomato plants. This is a study of drought resistance, protein formation, and growth itself as affected by water shortage. Without the aid of radioisotopes, many phases of this work would be impossible. Radioisotopes are also playing an increasingly important part in modern medicine. This patient is being given a diagnostic test of the thyroid. Before this test, she drank a solution containing a tracer amount of radioactive iodine. A scintillation counter above the area of the thyroid will pick up the extremely low-level gamma rays emitted by the iodine, now localized in the thyroid. The impulses from the scintillation counter are sent to a recording chart to indicate exactly how the thyroid is functioning. Prior to the use of radioisotopes, such a diagnosis was difficult and frequently required surgery. In addition to present day applications, many future benefits from research reactors can be anticipated. By providing an immediate source of neutrons, gamma rays and radioisotopes, this nuclear reactor brings to industry a new and valuable research tool. As the focal point of an intensive research program stimulated by the enthusiastic support of private enterprise, this reactor establishes a new concept 
in the rapidly expanding field of industrial research.